dear students welcome back to video lectures on advanced digital signal processing i am sharing the screen here let us resume our discussion on sampling rate conversion and let us understand in this video lecture how it it has implications in frequency domain and how does the frequency domain analysis will help us to figure out the reconstruction process and the guidelines on the necessary sampling rate that is required for uh, enabling this effective reconstruction even when we envisage either down sampling or up sampling subsequent to sampling a continuous time signal so we have seen in the last class uh, the time domain equations for down sampling and up sampling respectively for down sampling we have seen as this the time period increases while the frequency decreases okay for the down sample signal compared to the original uh, signal that is sampled from x c of t similarly when we do expansion or up sampling what we uh, take is um, we uh, increase the number of samples per second by effectively placing some of the uh, like zeros or interpolation in between the samples of a given x of n okay and we have seen an equation for uh, writing the expansion in time domain similarly uh, we also have seen the effect uh, like based on the uh, uh, intuition and rational that what shall happen in the frequency domain when we do either expansion or in down or down sampling now let us look at these expressions or the frequency domain relationships more elegantly through mathematical frameworks and uh, pictorial depictions in this video lecture right so let us uh, start the discussion so say if we have a uh, signal x of n and if you wish to do down sampling by m factor then xd of n can be written as x of m n right we take altern like m minus 1 alternate samples that is first sample and then third sample and fifth sample and so on when we want to down sample by two okay so uh, fr and from the discussion we had uh, in the uh, sampling on sampling and reconstruction we have seen that the frequency domain expression x of e power j omega that is fourier transform of x of n okay is related to fourier transform of xc of t uh, that is xc of e power j omega by this expression okay so and you can also see that this expression and you can also see that the small omega and capital omega that is continuous time uh, frequency and the discrete time frequency are related by this expression okay fine so where uh, x in x c of j omega right okay so uh, this helps us to now further investigate what shall happen if we have a down sampling or up sampling operations how does effectively the frequency domain expression or the discrete time fourier transform uh, changes or it relates to the x uh, fourier transform of x of n okay so now let us consider that we would like to take the fourier transform of x d of n and we would like to express it in terms of fourier transform of x of e power j omega okay that's what is what we want to do so that we get an idea of what happens in frequency domain when we do a down sampling operation right to the spectrum in to the discrete time spectrum of a sequence right let us now start with little bit of more mathematics so let us take for a transform of x d of n okay so see as we have seen x d of n can be written as for a transform of x of m into n right and this for a transform when we write it's equal to x of m n into e power 
minus j omega n. Right? n equal to minus infinity to infinity. Okay? So now let us, uh, this is formally writing for a transform of x d of e power j omega. Now, see, if you see this expression, see the uh, relation between we, what we want to do is to establish a rel relation between x d of e power j omega and x c of, okay, x c of j omega. Okay, so we would like to use this, um, see both x d of e power j omega and x of e power j omega are a um, sample, spectrums of sample sequences from x c of t. Okay, so we would like to relate them to x c of t, spectrums of x c of t. So what we would like to do is, so let us write x d of e power j omega, x of e power, using in similar lines with x of e power j omega relation to x c of j omega. Right. So this is the relation that relates x c of j omega and x of e power j omega. Now let us write x d of e power j omega. See, if we consider x d of e power j omega, how do we directly write in terms of x c? Is the question. How do we write? How do we write is, see, since you can see that x c of t, if you sample at capital T, okay, if you sample at sample, Mm, with time period of capital T, what we get is what we get is x of n. Whereas this same x c of t, if we sample at what time period do you think we get x of m n? What should be the sampling period to get x of m n? That is to pick only samples that are uh, say uh, time x of n picks the samples that are t apart. Okay, time period t apart. Whereas, okay, some time period t apart. Right? Whereas, this picks samples that are say m equal to 2. Then it picks samples 2t apart. Right? This picks samples that are t apart. Whereas, this picks samples that are 2t apart. Correct? So now, how should we write this? What is the sampling period? In, with respect to the xc of t, it is m times t. Right? So now, how do I write the expression xd of e power j omega? How do I write it? j times omega by mt. Right? Because time period is repeat, uh, like replaced by this. 2 pi k by mt. Fine. We can write like this. K equal to minus infinity to infinity. Right? So now to express x d of e power j omega in terms of x of e power j omega, right? We should get the expression. This somehow we should relate through these two expressions in the left hand side, in the right hand side. Okay? Right. So uh, how do we relate this? See, this k varies from minus infinity to infinity, right? Fine. So, I want to really express this k as, so, please let me know if there is anything wrong in this, r times m plus l, where l varies from minus infinity to infinity, while r varies from, sorry, where r varies from minus infinity to infinity, and l varies from what to what? To make this k vary from minus infinity to infinity, okay, I can do it in terms of two variables rather than a single free variable, okay. This r varies from minus infinity to infinity. In, so it, each r is bringing r equal to 0, r equal to 1, r equal to 2. Each r is bringing a steps of capital M. So there is a gap of M minus 1 in uh, k. So when we just allow only r to vary from minus infinity to infinity. That gap is being uh, 
you know, freezed or being uh, frozen by its model. And to make it happen, it varies from 0 to m minus 1. Right? So, L equal to 0 means directly multiple of m will come. And if R equal to 2 means the next multiple of m will come. Before that, there should be m minus 1 steps. That steps are being provided by this L. Right? So, this summation now, effectively by using these two variables, we can write x d of e power j omega as what? So, now you can see x d of e power j omega, which we had before, is simply k x c j omega by t m t because m is mt is the time period 2 pi k by mt right based on the based on the variable change of variables where k can be written as r times m plus l and l varying from 0 to m minus 1 Okay, and R varying from minus infinity to infinity, we can rewrite this x d of e power j omega is equal to R, one summation is over R, sorry, one summation is over R and another summation is over L. Okay, and this L varies from 0 to L equal to 0 to m minus 1 and whereas Yeah, this r varies from minus infinity to infinity. And hence, this can be written as x of j omega by mt minus 2 pi r m plus l, right, by mt. Okay? And this can be expanded. How? L equal to 0 to m minus 1. Please see here, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to bring in some term that is somehow related to uh, one term related to x of e power j omega, okay? And another additional terms assigned, okay? So that I can easily express x d of e power j omega in terms of x of e power j omega, okay? x c j omega by m minus 2 pi r Okay, 2 pi L by M by capital T minus 2 pi, okay, R by T, right? So, what did I do now? So, you can see here, as in this expression, that is expression 1, okay? So, you can see here that omega by t, there is one term, and then 2 pi k by t, another term. Here also, some, some function of omega by t, 2 pi r by t. So, it is looking, and now r varies from where to where? r goes from, and this r goes from, minus infinity to infinity. Okay? So now, leaving this, say you can see if I just uh, make a small uh, change of color, okay, you can easily see that this is L equal to 0 to M minus 1. See, you can see this whole expression as what? It's exactly like x c of j, some function of omega f of w by t minus 2 pi r by t. So, this can be written as x c of j omega means now omega by m minus 2 pi l by m. Okay? That's all. e power. e power j, sorry. Okay? Summation over L equal to 0 to M minus 1. Okay, this is what is this? 
x d of e power j omega. Okay, so now what is this? Whole thing is say this is replace x c of e power j omega. You have seen here x c of sorry x of e power j omega. You have seen here because this whole thing now. Okay, you see if you see this whole thing maps to this omega, right? Similarly here now this minus infinity infinity whole thing this uh this whole thing now maps to omega, right? This sorry uh this whole thing maps to this, right? This whole thing maps to this, right? Okay, so this whole thing is this. Okay, so x c of anyway. So you can see that uh, right. This whole thing is mapping to omega here. Our x of e power j omega, and this whole thing comes here, right? Or if you want uh, to be more specific, you can see that this term and this term are same. Right, remaining thing is x c to x of e power j omega. Right, sorry. Here, what should I write here? X c will come still. It is I am trying to write in terms of x of e power j omega. Right. Right. So this is what is the relation between discrete time Fourier transform of down sample signal and the uh, sample signal. Now let us. Summarize these two in uh, like so in time domain. If you have actually so if you have x of n, okay. So x d of n is down sample version. Okay, x of n down sample by two. Okay, imply what you have is sorry. Let us write them in better way. X d of n is equal to x of m n. This is in time domain for integer m. Okay, in time domain implies that in frequency domain x d of e power j omega is equal to x of e power j omega. Okay, by m omega by m minus two pi l by m. Okay. And this L goes from zero to m minus one, right? So, what does this indicate? That if in time domain there is a compression, see multiplying by n means what? So for each of the m n samples, you are taking one sample in the down sample signal. So there is a effectively a compression. Men imply compression in time. That is for each m n samples, one sample is taken in x d of n, right? And here in frequency domain, now what will happen? Expansion. By m factor. Okay, the frequency spectrum gets expanded by m times. This is one, like one observation from this expression. Okay, so expansion by m factor, which is being expanded, frequency domain spectrum. Frequency spectrum is expand expanded okay is expanded by factor m okay this is one observation what is the second observation from 
when you don't sample a already sample signal see if there is already sample signal with you and if you are down sampling it okay what is the other observation that you can make <coughs> if you are down sampling by 2 this already sample signal what may happen you are sampling a sample signal so it is just like see you are if you do sampling a continuous time signal what is the implication that you have got what we are getting what the implication we got is a repetition in the frequency domain right so there it is sampled by impulse time so it is repeated from minus infinity to infinity but here down sampling in each of the say uh, uh, by two means okay for each two, two samples one down one and one sampling is happening so there will be one repetition that happens it is roughly sampled by m times so the replica replication will be roughly spectrum repeats m in addition to the existing spectrum m minus one times right thus this indicates okay spectrum repeats u2 down sampling down sampling means sampling the sample signal okay spectrum repeats by spectrum repeats by how many times m minus 1 times in addition to base spectrum in base spectrum means at uh, omega equal to 0 okay so there is a repetition by m minus 1 times so it finally it will occur m times that's the other implication okay so these two are the effects of the down sampling right so even when you down sample the continuous time signal what has happened the magnitude has like the uh, say x x of t and x of n Okay, when you convert it from the sample signal to time domain, when you drop, what happened? The T is what, this is the uh, amount by which the frequency spectrum stretched. Okay, same thing is happening here. Okay, it is frequency spectrum is expanded by M factor here. Okay, fine. Right. So, let us now sketch for an example. To see how does this down sampling affects the spectrum. Let us consider a spectrum directly. Assume that this is from minus 500 to 500. Okay, same example that we have taken before to make some of the uh, sketches or observations easy. Okay. Okay, and then uh, this is xc of j omega. Okay, and assume that first x of n is constructed with a time period of... Uh, T S R T is is equal to one by two thousand. R F S is equal to you know, from X of T X C of T. Okay, we have done sampling two thousand. Okay, T is sampled with this information. Okay, and you got what X of N, right? To, you got x of n right and now we want to sketch this spectrum first for x of n right so here is the spectrum minus 500 to 500 okay where does it repeat it repeats at mm. 
battery well. It repeats it. Oh. It repeats from my, at what? 200 H. 2000 H. Similarly, minus 2000 H. Okay, omega S and minus omega S. Okay, so they let this be omega by 2 pi axis. Far right. Right? Just give me a little pause. Are you amigo? Powering off. Now let us write the x of epoch j omega. Okay, so I will not write x of epoch j omega separately here for the uh, ease of uh, uh, like uh, writing. We will only change the small omega axis. We'll write the axis because there is only change of axis. Okay, so this is zero. Let it be. And this will be what? This will be what? That you please tell. Figure out from yourself. Okay. So this is 2 pi. Omega s is corresponding to 2 pi. This is minus 2 pi. And this corresponds to pi by 2. And this corresponds to minus pi by 2. And this corresponds to pi by 2. And similarly, this is 3 pi by 2. And in between is pi. Okay. This is this corresponds to minus three by two, right? So now this is the same spectrum is same. Spe like spectrum doesn't change except that the axis changes for omega. Now let us sketch for uh, x of e power j omega, x d of e power j omega. So this is what is same spectrum you get. This is for x e of j omega. X of j omega, sorry, x s of j omega, and this spectrum, same spectrum you will get for x of e power j omega with change of frequencies. Okay, change of axis. Right now, we wish to sketch how should be x of x d of e power j omega. How, how would it be? It will expand by two times. That is first thing that will happen. That means minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 it was. Okay. Now it goes from where to where? Minus pi to pi. Okay. Because down sampling by 2. X of n is obtained. Assume that from here. Okay. From here. X of n is obtained by down sampling by 2. X d of n. Okay. For this we would like to sketch this vector. Right. That is what is this. Okay, so it happens and then what will happen? See, once you do this, this is zero. And when I expand, this two pi will become four pi, right? When we expand this spectrum now, whichever is here, second replica of this will come and sit at four pi. And hence the spectrum also will be from there, right? And so on. It will also okay. It will be this side, right? Okay. Similarly, here also. Now, what will happen in between? This is because of this spectrum. Whatever I have drawn there is just the stretch of this. Okay. And this is this. And what will happen in between? There will be a repetition. Okay. So this is 4 pi and this is 3 pi. Okay. And this is 2 pi now. Okay. So this is because of what? And this is because of same thing happens in uh, like in the negative side. Okay. And this is anyway spectrum. Other thing. Okay. And this is because of this. Right. So can we write now mathematically what is this? X of e power j omega by 2. Right? Omega by m. 
whichever you had here. Okay. E power j omega m plus e power j omega by 2 minus 2 pi by 2 pi l by m. l is 1 here. So 2 pi by 2. Okay. That is the next thing. Okay. So you can see here. Just let me uh, write this better. Okay, let me write this also with the proper color. So I will write here, this corresponds to this color. Okay, x of e power j omega by 2, right? Plus, and what is this? This color, x of e power j. This is this, this is this. This together is what? The whole thing together is x d of e power j omega. This is what is this. Correct? So this has one replica directly by stretching this. One first spectrum directly by stretching it. And the replica comes because of by shifting it by pi and stretching it. Okay? And hence it comes at 2 pi. Right? And then similarly this corresponds to the second replica. This is how the spectrum of XD of E power J omega. And now, does this avoid aliasing after downsampling? In this example, yes. Correct? No aliasing even after downsampling. So, if you see the sampling initial frequency, maximum frequency in the signal, FM is equal to 5,500. Whereas, FS is equal to 2,000. Okay? And and we want to downsample by two times. Okay, m equal to two. That means to avoid aliasing after downsampling by m times, how, what should be the initial sampling frequency? Now we would like to modify or we would like to add on using the uh, Nyquist theorem. We want to give a statement or we would like to tell a frequency fs dash okay that avoids aliasing even if i downsample by m times since there is an expansion by m times to avoid aliasing by m times this has to be greater than or equal to m times twice the maximum frequency in the signal right to avoid aliasing after sampling and downsampling okay by m times what we need is from x e of t okay in this fm is in x e of t X of t is sampled with f, has maximum frequency of fm. And xs of t is obtained with this sampling. Or xfn is obtained with this sampling. Right? And then I want to obtain xfn is obtained with this sampling. Okay? And we want, after this we get xd of n. To avoid aliasing in xd of n, what you need is this condition. Okay? To avoid aliasing in xd of n. Okay? So, hope this is clear. Right? So, and based on this, you can, you know, you will know a priori. If we downsample by these many times, will the aliasing happens or doesn't happen? In this case now, so assume that if I want to downsample by three times, then what do you think? Will the aliasing happen? So if we downsample by three times, it means that the three times of FM in to two, that is uh, 6,000 is higher than the, sorry, three, uh, 3000 is higher than the fs okay so if we don't sample if m equal to 3 then if m were 3 then we would have a aliasing when we sample the initial x c of t with fs equal to 2000 okay so initial sampling itself has to be decided pre-decided in such a way that if uh, like there is no aliasing even after down sampling right in the next video lecture 
we will see if there is a aliasing in frequency domain after if there is an expectation of aliasing in frequency domain how do we avoid it okay how do we avoid it or how do we uh, uh, even though there is a information loss okay that may be anticipated but how do we uh, avoid the effect of uh, aliasing or mixing up the frequencies okay e while doing down sampling that we will discuss in the subsequent video lecture thank you